And, and so you're staying in this anabolic state all the time and you build much more muscle, same total volume. Yo, what up, what up? It's your man, Big Brandon Carter. I am here in San Jose, California, and I'm with a very special guest, my man Sal from Mind Pump. Uh, we came out here to his facilities uh, to talk uh, talk about bodybuilding, talk about working out, training, and you know, I was on his podcast, he was on ours, and we filmed some content together, man. But uh, it's an honor to be here with you, bro. What's up? <laughs> How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on, so. Yeah, man. Let me ask you a question, bro. Um, you're one of the only people that I hear saying a lot of stuff that I've been preaching over the years. And I, I just like to talk to you about some of these things, mainly full body workouts. Like I've been trying to tell people for years that that's like the best for naturals when it comes to like building muscle, but you know, the bodybuilding magazines and all these other bodybuilders and just other people say, man, you, everyone does a split. Everyone does a split. You gotta, you need to do you split to build muscle. You know, it's good at first to do full body, but you gotta, I hear this all the time. Can you shut these people up for a minute? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So the thing you want to consider with uh, with split type routines is, first and foremost, the people that respond, that tend to respond well to them, tend to be on a lot of gear. Yeah. So a lot of these bodybuilders are on a lot of anabolics, so their bodies don't respond like most of ours do. And they're also genetic an uh, anomalies. Uh, these are guys and girls that build muscle very rapidly and quickly. In other words, the anabolic or the muscle building signal that they get from lifting weights probably stays elevated for much longer than the average person. Now they've actually done lots of studies on this and the studies show that when you increase the frequency of which you train, uh, train body parts, you're gonna build more muscle. There's actually, it's really not a debate. The study's been done many, many, many times. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now you talk about full body workouts. That's what we promote as well. The reality is you can do a split. You just wanna do a lot of frequency of training. And this is what I mean by that. If you took your chest, for example, and let's say you trained your chest on Mondays, and you did you know, 15 sets for chest, you're gonna be better off doing five sets for chest, but then doing five sets three days a week. Same total volume, yeah. triple the frequency. Now what the studies show is when you, when you hammer a muscle in the gym, you have what's called a muscle building signal. That muscle building signal can be different or independent from recovery. What that means is your muscle is starting to build and it's starting to recover. Those can be two separate things. Studies will show that that muscle building signal elevates right after a workout and peaks at about 48 to 72 hours. And they measure this with something called muscle protein synthesis. Even though you may still be sore, your muscle building signal is starting to drop. So if you hit your, your chest real hard Monday, by Wednesday, that signal starts to decline. But now you're waiting an entire week to hit chest. Right. What's you more- out on like five days of protein synthesis. Exactly, so what's more effective would be hit your chest on Monday, get that muscle building signal. By the time it starts to drop, you hit it again. By the time it starts to drop, you hit it again. And so you're staying in this anabolic state all the time and you build much more muscle. Same total volume. Nobody's saying cut your workouts in half or anything like that. Same volume, it's just split up over three days or four days or however you want to do your split. Full body just tends to be the most efficient. You can potentially get more volume. Right, you can potentially get more volume. Maybe you can do, I mean, if, if I can do more than five sets, you know, it, it, and, and not break down the muscle so much that I can't uh, work it again every other day, right? So wouldn't more, like, if, and if that's possible, wouldn't more volume and more frequency, doesn't that just make sense? It does, and you know, uh, here's the other thing you wanna consider. If I, again, we'll stick with chest, right? Yeah. If I'm hitting my chest for 15 or 20 sets, typically most guys and girls will start off with the most effective exercises, right? I'm gonna do my bench press, I'm gonna do my incline, incline press, my dumbbell exercises. But by the time you get to like the seventh set or eighth set, you start to get fatigued and then you start doing these, you know, finisher exercises. Yeah where I'm squeezing and isolating, mainly because I'm fatigued and I can't really get more right. out of the workout. If I'm only gonna do six sets, and I know I'm gonna hit my chest again on Wednesday and Friday, most of the exercises I'm gonna do are gonna be the most effective ones, the compound. the compound movements. So now, not only are you doing triple the frequency, but you're also doing much more effective exercises more frequently. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why when people switch, and here's the thing, try it out for yourself, you got nothing to lose. Yeah. 
switch it up, on average, people will gain like three to five pounds of muscle in a very short period of time from going from a split to more of a full body type of a routine. Yeah. Far more effective. Yeah. So what about the guy who's listening to this and saying, hey, I did that when I first started out, but now I need more volume. You know, like I need more volume. You're saying you don't need more volume. You, you, it's the frequency, man. I mean, that's, that's what I believe that, but Absolutely. somebody's thinking of typing that in the comments. Look, if you like the volume, if you need to hit 30 sets for a body part, you can still do that with, uh, with more frequency. Just split it up. So instead of doing 30 sets in one workout, do 10 sets for three workouts. You don't have to drop your volume, but you will increase the frequency. Yeah. And watch what happens. Watch what happens to your muscles. It'll trip you out. Frequency, man. Frequency. And, and you know, the reason that all these, you know, the pros and all this, you know, like I said, they're, they're, they don't do this because they're genetically gifted, but they're also on gear, right? And like, if I'm not mistaken, when you're on gear, like your, your protein synthesis lasts longer. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, like Absolutely. it's not the same. You can't compare yourself. No, so, so the, it's really about the anabolic signal that you're playing with. When you lift weights, especially if you're natural, you want to keep that anabolic signal elevated. Now, there's many, many ways you could do that, one of which is through exercise. The other way you can do that is hormonally. A hormonal signal can be anabolic. So if I gave you testosterone, and now we've elevated your testosterone, you know, three, four, five, ten times higher than it normally is, you now have a loud... A hormonal anabolic signal and that's what people get when they're on a lot of gear yeah. so they don't necessarily need to worry so much about this you know th like we like we would have to worry about it. but here's the thing those pros would benefit from more frequency as they well what, now, now, why, now why don't they do it because because you would think that they would it'd be the same like why why don't they they're starting to you're oh, actually you're so actually hard. starting to see bodybuilders start to increase the amount of frequency to their look uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, arguably one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. He did a lot of volume. He hit each body part two or three days a week as well. He used to do these split routines where he'd come in the morning, hit three body parts, come at night, hit three body parts. And by the time he was done with the week, he would have hit every muscle group two or three days a week. So really it's about the frequency of training. I don't care how you split it up. For most of you, full body is going to work best. Just being honest with you, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, but if you want to do push, pull, whatever, you can do splits like that as well. Just increase the frequency, keep the total volume the same, watch what happens. Yeah, I like full body. Personally, I like full body or uh, upper lower, and I'll just do it just upper lower, upper lower, and rest on Sundays. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I, I like that one too. Push pull legs is as much as I'd split it up. And I would only do that just for like change, you know, because sometimes when, just when you change, you know, you get a different kind of effect. Um, and that's another thing. Some people say they, they get bigger when they switch to, 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 split but that's just because they changed it up right yeah so the body's always looking to adapt and new signals your body will respond better to new signals than they will to old signals so whatever you're stuck in changing it uh even uh, even temporarily even if it's a short period of time you should get a response yeah. so here's a good example let's say you always train in the uh, 8 to 12 rep range if you go down to the you know one to four rep range you're gonna see muscle growth. If you go to the 15 to 20 rep range, you're gonna see muscle growth. If you stay in that rep range for too long, stuff starts to stop and plateau. So it's about sending that new that new signal. But I'd rather I'd rather you switch up other variables instead of frequency. I don't know. I I feel like frequency is is one of the keys. I'd rather you not switch up the frequency. Personally, I, I, there's so many variables you can switch. You can rep ranges, uh, exercise, and may go from dumbbells to all barbells. Maybe do all calisthenics for a few m m weeks or something. Uh, or you rest times. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many variables. Frequency, man, should stay high. I believe. I, I I agree. And what's funny to me is that if you ask somebody about calf training. Calves are notoriously stubborn for almost everybody. If you don't got calves, if you're not born with calves, yeah. they're probably stubborn when you train them. But when you talk to people about calves, all of a sudden, you gotta train them three or four days a week. Well, because they're applying a lot of frequency to a very stubborn muscle group. Apply that same thing to the rest of your body and watch what happens. No joke, the average person I've had switch between three to five pounds of real solid muscle. Studies show builds more muscle, burns more body fat, more effective for your hormones as well. Just Yo, hands down. Look, man, I did, I did, I, I just ran an experiment just for fun, right? Me and my friends, we said, look, what happens if we squat every day for 90 days? And there was no like protocol, we just did it to feel, right? So some days we go heavy, some days we go light. We, we never went to failure too much, but it was frequency every day, like no days off. And in the first two weeks we were really sore, but then we stopped getting sore. And with uh, one of my boys quit halfway through because he, uh, he grew out of all his pants. 
I grew, I went two pants. I to the point where I don't even really work like hamstrings and, and glutes that much because it's I'm unproportional. I'm gonna be out here looking like Nicki Minaj, right? Because <laughs> I made like my my thighs and, and butt got like too big from that. It was just the frequency. Now what people tell me is that they said and that only worked. Brandon must be on roids. That's why it worked. And I'm like, no, it worked because I'm not. That's what you do when you're not on roids, uh, you yeah. know, or something. Maybe not that, but like that was extreme. But the frequency is what did it. Yeah, if you, it's uh, it's one of those variables uh, with resistance training that people are just they're missing right now. Yeah. They're really, really not getting it. And here's the deal. Uh, you made an interesting point. You said you weren't going to failure. Yeah. Going to failure can be useful sometimes, but for the most part, uh, it's actually too much intensity for most people. And that doesn't mean you don't need to train hard. Yeah. You want to get to your to the point where you're one or two reps, you know, close to failure. Yeah. But going to failure tends to fry the central nervous system more than other techniques with exercise. And if your central nervous system is fried, your muscles can be stimulated and they can be recovered and whatever, but the CNS, if that's not recovered, you're not gonna go anywhere. Mm. And this, you know, I like to give this analogy on my podcast all the time. You wanna think of the central nervous system as like an amplifier yeah. and your muscles are like speakers. If I have a weak amp, I could have the most powerful speakers in the world. No sound is gonna go through them. That's literally what your central nervous system does. Going to failure too frequently fries the CNS so you could have recovered muscles, you could have all the protein and creatine and all the stuff in the world, muscles aren't gonna respond. So that would be the other tip I would give people is train intensely, stop about two reps short of failure, increase your frequency, double or triple it, keep the total volume the same, watch what happens. You know what I do, like, I go, I try to keep my form pretty strict, right? You know, like good, like what, good form. And I, I, what I used to call failure, now I call it like performance failure. I want, I want you to take on this until I, I can't do it anymore with good form, Excellent. right? Like I can I can do more if I start swinging around, but like when, as soon as the form starts to degrade, I'm like, all right, I'm done. Is that kind of like what you're talking, is that similar? Exactly, yeah. that's exactly what I'm talking about. So it's it's not like what we used to consider failure yeah, where yeah. you just, you can't even move. Absolutely right, like the last rep should be the last rep you could perform perfectly. Yeah. That's, that's when you stop. And that's about, that's usually about two reps short of what we used to consider failure. And it's interesting because I know you've been training for a long time. Yeah. You've been training people for a long time. These are the things you learn. I've been doing it for 20 years. Mm -hmm. These are the things you learn through experience, through training people, and you just see what works. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of the information that's in the bodybuilding magazines, I hate to say it, it's false. A lot of it's not gonna work for you. Uh, what we're talking about is experience. The good thing is the science is coming out and is now supporting it. If you look this up, you could do this yourself. Just Google full body training versus split training, science or studies, you will see at least four or five studies that already prove this is it's superior for muscle building and for strength building. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, the, you know, like I'm saying, if you if you ever played high school football, or college football at the collegiate level, they're not having the guys do splits. No. You know what I'm saying? No. <laughs> they're not having them do splits. You know. But anyway, listen. Thank you so much. Listen, guys. If you want more awesome information like this, make sure you check out Sal's podcast. He does with the the Mind Pump podcast. One of the best podcasts on the internet always in the top five, five top mm -hmm. ten in fitness and their youtube channel we'll put links to both in the description man thank you so appreciate much brother it. thank you i right, appreciate it